When I was still a boy, my father told me how the great spirits had promised us all the land where we lived. Our people felt the richest in the world. All that land provided us with plenty, much more than we needed. Our people lived by plowing corn and hunting buffalo, just like our predecessors. Almost all parts of the great animal were used. But this life in harmony with our land was perennially threatened by the white man, who spread and degraded the land they occupied. But our people did not allow our sacred lands to be desecrated by white men in their sick search for the yellow metal. My father was a great warrior, but without the arm he had lost in the fight against the crows, he could no longer fight on horseback. Therefore, he was responsible for defending the tribe in the absence of the warriors. My father took us to the camp of our Cheyenne allies. But we were not prepared for the scenario we would encounter. Without their warriors, the defenseless camp of our friends was devastated. Old men, women, and children were torn apart by the sabers of the blue-coated warriors. I carry that terrible image with me until this very day. It's a rare night when I don't have nightmares about that. Those lands were no longer safe. We decided to leave for Black Hill, the sacred mountains. It was there that we saw the silhouettes of a group of warriors. Their long-brimmed hats indicated they were white men. The blue coats looked at us like hungry wolves before a defenseless prey. Like wild beasts, they set off to attack at the sound of their metallic instrument, which anticipated the arrival of the spirits of death. My father ordered us to form a defensive circle, using our belongings as cover. I was given a rifle, too heavy for a boy my size. I was already trying to aim and shoot, but my father shouted for me to wait until the enemy came closer, as I would only have one chance to hit the target. The white warriors rode around our defenses, roaring wildly. A knight advanced against me, and his bloodthirst look made my knees tremble. But I was the son of the singing eagle. Courage was in our blood, and so I kept my position. I still remember my father's proud look when he saw his little son knocking down the white warrior. My father did everything he could to defend our people, but the blue coats were numerous. My father fell, protecting his friends and family. Our arrows and bullets were vanishing. The end was near. Suddenly, the earth began to shake and the white men felt frightened. A large group of Sioux warriors emerged with their powerful war cries. They put an end to the white warriors' courage. Many blue coats tried to run away, but several tasted the fury of our warriors. I knelt beside my father, who was dying. He still managed to say that his departure was a happy one, knowing that his boy was now a man and a future great warrior. The Sioux warriors returned after chasing the blue coats, and among all the warriors, one stood out. He was the Sitting Bull, the great warrior and spiritual leader of the Lakota. Under his command, the Sioux and Cheyenne opposed the relentless advance of the white men. They were unwilling to give up their lands and renounce their lifestyle without fighting. Olá, amigos mamíferos, vocês acabaram de assistir o prólogo do nosso mais novo projeto, As Lendas do Velho Oeste. Nesta nova série, com artes de Rafael Grit e cores de Fabi Marx, iremos conhecer um pouco da vida dos maiores heróis e vilões do Velho Oeste. Cowboys, pistoleiros, homens da lei, famosos ladrões de bancos e os mais bravos guerreiros indígenas. 
Mostre que você é rápido no gatilho e se inscreva logo no canal. E não se esqueça de conferir os quadrinhos que já estão à venda na Amazon. Os links estão aqui na descrição. Um abraço de foca e até a próxima.